no matter what FPS you play, there are good guns and there are bad guns. Whether it's Twitch's F2 in Rainbow Six or the ever-goated AK in CSGO, there are weapons that we make sacrifices to get in our hands. This is Pro taking a slow body, holding the angle very smartly indeed. Continuation what? spray! That is one of the most absurd things I have seen. And yet, in the still nascent history of Valorant, one question has plagued every player that's ever queued into a server. Phantom or Vandal? You see, there are certain close to medium range spray downs that can only be committed with a Phantom. Corner, you can play in, and he plays it perfectly. The spam comes up, and it's a great transfer onto three. Looking for a four. Just as there are truly tantalizing tap fests that can only come courtesy of the Vandal. Now the duelists are starting to come through. He avoids no the way. flash! Leave! Virtually every competitor swears by either one or the other. But why? Well, what we're here to figure out is whether one of them is actually better than the other. Whether it's all a question of personal preference or whether using one of them in all or certain situations can actually offer you a competitive advantage. Dead! What? Oh, oh my god! Fine. You can't do that with a Vendel. You can't do that shit with a Vendel. Okay, so before we start tapping and spraying, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. I'll be honest, I didn't write like a cheeky thing for this one. Just do those things. All right, so whenever you hop into a Valorant server and you stumble your way into the first buy round, there is a very important question that you must ask yourself. Which rifle do you buy? The Phantom or the Vandal? The Vandal and the Phantom are the most important and most used weapons in the entire game of Valorant. And despite having the exact same cost, they're actually quite different. Sure, at their most basic core, they're modeled after the AK and the M4A4 slash A1S from CSGO, respectively. But it's not that simple. The Phantom has 30 round mags with a higher rate of fire, while the Vandal has 25 round mags and a slower rate of fire. But what really sets these weapons apart is their damage at distance. The Vandal is able to one-tap heads and four-tap torsos from any range, since there's no damage drop-off. The Phantom, on the other hand, does have a drop-off. At 15 to 30 meters, it only does 140 damage to the head, and from 30 to 50 meters, it only headshots for 124. And if you've ever played Valorant, you know that hitting someone on the head for 140 is just about the most infuriating shit ever. Almost as annoying as the Deagle not one-shot headshotting from long range. Doing 140 to someone and not dying is just is just sad. Like you don't even know what, I don't even know what to say. Nice. Okay, so let's get into the nitty-gritty of it. Because there are two features that the Vandal has that are very important and will probably help you make your decision. As I'm sure you can tell, the Phantom is silenced, meaning that bullet tracers are not visible to enemies, which means you can spray through smokes and walls all you want without getting punished for it, since enemies won't know where exactly the shots are coming from. Try doing that with the Vandal, you're gonna have a bad time. What the f am I doing? But where the Phantom really takes the cake is with respect to first shot accuracy. Its 0.2 first shot spread makes it the second most accurate gun in the entire game. What is the most accurate, you ask? Well, it is none other than Hiko's boomer-friendly head bopper, the Guardian. Now, with the Phantom, your first bullet should go exactly where you're aiming almost every time, assuming you aren't moving. But the Vandal's 0.25 first shot spread makes it more akin to the AK in CS, where every once in a while you might actually be aiming at someone's head, but the shot just mysteriously misses. Now, this might not seem like a significant difference, but when you're taking, you know, on average 10 to 20 gunfights per match, you're likely to experience it. And if you do, it might just cost you a kill. Master roll, go down. That's a headshot check! Clip it! What? It's right on his head! 
Needless to say, the Vandal does face some minor inaccuracy issues. And aside from its damage fall off, the Phantom beats it in pretty much every category. But with this being perhaps the most pressing question in the entirety of Valorant's meta, we took it upon ourselves to ask the pros. What do they think? Because not all of them use the Phantom every time. In fact, for some of them, it's actually quite situational. I use both and I buy it based off the position I'm in on the map. So if I'm like on attack bind and I'm going long B, I'm, I buy the Vandal because you can't one tap people at that range with the Phantom. But if I'm playing a B on Breeze where I just sit like backside, like close to the entrance where like everyone's like really close, like running in, I use the Phantom. So it's just like wherever it makes sense to use it. I have Phantom. I, I think it more often than not, it bails me out than the Vandal does. Uh, it also gets me multi-frags a lot more than the Vandal does. Spray transferring to different targets is also much easier with the Phantom, which isn't saying a lot for a game that lacks set spray patterns, but the difference is noticeable. Now, to some pros, the Vandal is just more fun to use on certain maps, especially when they're just trying to have fun in matchmaking. I switched between both, but like, I started doing like Vandal on two maps, so Breeze and Icebox because they're very long distance fights. Uh, some people say, like Shaz even says it, he's like, if you're using the Vandal for those specific reasons, like long distance fights, then you're using it wrong. Like you, you're taking the wrong fights. But Percy, like in rank, like I'm just taking fights, you know, it doesn't matter. So I'm just like, if it's a long distance fight, like Breeze, it's a pretty big map. Like I want to use the Vandal. I don't want to hit someone for 140. But Phantom is better in every other, every other way, like on Bind Haven, all those maps, I use a Phantom because you have more bullets, you spray through walls, better recoil, stuff like that. The bottom line is that, broadly speaking, the Phantom is just better, full stop. In fact, there's actually a sense in which the weapon might be a little bit too strong. That said, when it comes to some pros, you know, the real gods, the choice really doesn't matter. If you're someone who has just insanely nutty aim and a high headshot percentage, then using the Vandal is absolutely viable. Tapping or bursting can offer some very solid results if your name happens to be Scream. Cause God knows, there is nothing more satisfying than hitting some insanely clean one taps. But generally speaking, it's a gun for freaks, not for you to try to flex with in gold. The Vandal's de definitely better to watch, don't get me wrong, there are some players that make the vandal look at screen i prefer seeing screen with a vandal um but then you look at players like six zoms you know shazam even to an extent with a with a phantom's pretty disgusting when he's on the jet still um it, it's it's night and day to me the counter rather of popping down the old pushing me to catch them oh, on the way and God. scream oh my Enemy god related. man Headshot Spiked after headshot! And Screen comes through to ruin their day. Toronto's even nated himself and Screen aces it out. Now, if you're one of those CSGO scrubs like myself, who is kind of guilty of spraying and praying with the Phantom whenever they play Valorant, learning to, you know, tap and burst with the Vandal, essentially reverting back to my 1.6 self, will take some time. It might take a while to break the habit, but I promise you that it's worth it in the end. Because spraying with the Vandal just doesn't work as well as it does with the Phantom. Unless, of course, you're Chronicle. That dude's just cracked. You gotta make this happen, Chronicle! He walks through and destroys Envy! Three back-to-back -back frags, and it might be four in a second. He's on the chopping block. Gambit have made it to 12. Now, we've heard what the pros have to say, but what about your everyday silver scrub like like colton you think i'd be in silver i mean considering i haven't even installed the game i'll take that as a compliment now one thing i did want to touch on though is the assumption that the vandal is stronger at long range due to not having any damage drop off because there's more at play here than just damage when i saw the 0 0.2 and 0 0.25 degree first bullet spread numbers it got my math brain thinking. Since we know those angles, we can calculate what the maximum spread on your first bullet will be over different distances for each gun. And while the difference is relatively small initially, the further away your target is, the more pronounced the difference in your first shot accuracy, which will ultimately lead to a larger variance in the amount of shots you're hitting, regardless of how good your aim is. Now, I may not be your go-to source for Valorant gameplay tips, 
mostly because I don't play the game. But one thing I can give you some insight into is what happens on the tech side during your gunfight, which may actually have a bigger impact on your rifle choice than you think. And we're gonna start with hitscan. Hitscan is the method for calculating bullet trajectories and hits used for every gun in Valor. The bullets don't travel as physical objects in the game engine, rather the server just calculates a line at the moment you fire and checks to see if you hit anything. The other part of this equation is that Valorant is server authoritative. Anything happening in your Valorant game is being simulated twice, once on the server and concurrently on your own machine so that it can smoothly predict movement with a relatively rare update from the server if anything begins to shift out of place. This is true for movement as well as combat. Because of this, there is ultimately gonna be some travel time between you pressing your left mouse button, the server getting that information, the server going back to the frame of the simulation where that button was pressed, running the hitscan calculation to see if slash what you hit, then sending that information back to the player's PCs. But the devs over at Riot have implemented some pretty interesting solutions to keep your gameplay, and more specifically your combat, smooth and consistent, like a variable buffer size for updates from players' PCs reaching the server, as well as every Valorant client updating its movement, physics, and other related systems at the same rate as the server, 128 times every second regardless of your game's frame rate. Now, I know that was a lot of pretty technical information. Ultimately, your hardware and your ping to the Valorant servers will affect your experience with both the Phantom and the Vandal. Does the Vandal hit considerably harder past 30 meters? Yes. Does that necessarily translate into more DPS? Statistically, probably not. Whatever rank you're at, if you want to take Valorant seriously, having a general understanding of how things like hit registration and netcode work is going to help you when it comes down to which rifle to buy. And now back to you, Dimitri. So you can keep telling the audience what the pros told Niall, the guy who actually wrote the script. Anyway, what I'm really getting at is which one of these rifles is more noob friendly. Yep, you probably guessed it. The Phantom is by far the more forgiving weapon to use. The larger magazine size and the higher rate of fire just makes spraying the damn thing a better option for beginners. In fact, if you find yourself in a duel against a fellow silver scrub and the two of you are just going at it, hitting a bunch of shots at each other's toes because your crosshair placement is so damn bad, then the Phantom will just win out because higher rate of fire means more DPS. Now, although the Phantom is the more accessible rifle, I still recommend swapping to the Vandal in certain situations, like on Icebox or Breeze, where you know that you might be taking longer range fights. You have five extra bullets with the Phantom and it's easier to spray. There, like, there's literally no reason to use a Vandal there. Like, if mm -hmm. you pick a Vandal over a Phantom there, like, it just makes no logical sense. It's just troll. But if, you, if you're, if you like, using the Vandal on A, if you're, like, defending A, where, like, they're running out that long, like, main hole and you're playing far back, like, the Vandal's obviously better. Like, so it, it has their situations. There's not, like, one's better than the other. It's, I think it's just situational. Now, like Zom says, you can probably argue that on each map, there are certain areas where the Vandal just reign supreme. But for the most part, you're still better off sacrificing the guaranteed one-shot headshot for the Phantom. It doesn't help that since Valorant's release, the game has been plagued by run and gun issues. The penalty for shooting while running or walking is so negligible in Valorant that you can often be rewarded for just sprinting around corners and pre-firing dudes with a Phantom. And sure, you can argue that it's possible to do this with any weapon, but with the Phantom and the Spectre, it's busted. Riot even tried nerfing it way back in June, but it honestly wasn't enough. Hell, I still get killed by spray bullets from some Phoenix Ferrari peeking me out of garage, and that shit sucks. But at least we know that Riot is somewhat listening to the community's concerns. Running and gunning might still be a problem, but Riot have decided to tackle it little by little for a reason. They can't just completely rework the game's gun mechanics all at once, otherwise they risk breaking Valorant altogether. And until it gets another round of nerfs, then nearly every top competitor, or at least those who want to be as competitive as possible, are just gonna keep rocking the Phantom. It's just the best rifle in the game, and there's really no arguing against that. 
even though sometimes when you're feeling it, the Vandal can look sick, I think consistency-wise, Phantom is just the better gun. Sure, using the Vandal, pretending your scream, and taking duels can be fun in matchmaking, but if you want to take the game seriously, then there's pretty much no doubt that, as of right now, the Phantom is the way to go. This has to be it. This is where they're going to be. I'm still going to try and get that. Whoa! No way, Zoms. That spray couldn't have been better. The wild swing on the first, but again, the Phantom of the Happy yeah. You can see they're pretty happy about that one. Oh, my dryer. I gotta show that one. So. Ooh. This episode is sponsored by Maytag. Sponsored by Maytag. Hey, man, if Maytag wants to send me a new F wording. Dryer, I'm absolutely game, dude. Please be my guest. We can do a crack on washer dryers, right? 100%. Easy. They've got to be able to run Valorant now. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll interview Get Right. Like, it'll be fine. I'll just, we'll get Bolo. Like, talk about washer dryers. Easy. But what about the silver scrubs? Like, my boy Colton. Good job, Wally. <laughs>